Okay. So, first of all, I would like to thank the organization for letting me use the map. And I would say, when you go map, you never go back. So, and I, I can't go back. Sorry for the other guys that are using other platforms. So, um, a year ago, about a year ago, World Wildlife Foundation published a report they called the Living Climate Report. And on that report, they, they basically analyzed um, the health of the planet. They analyzed its biorhythm, and they also analyzed our footprints on the, on the environment. And the conclusions I'm not going to talk about. The conclusions, because we all know the conclusions, but basically, there's an equation behind the conclusions that are it's pretty much interesting. 1.3 planets, we are using 1.3 planets of resources to feed our consumption. And that is basically data from 2005. This is 2008 because of the data of the report, but it's data from 2005. And if we were all Europeans, we would need three planets of resources. If we were all Americans, we would need five planets of resources. So basically, what we're saying is that we're actually living beyond our means. We're borrowing resources from the future. And the, the future doesn't have much resources to offer us. Because if we don't act quickly in 30 years' lifetime, one generation, we will need two planets of resources. And if we were all Americans or Europeans, we wouldn't exist, basically. So uh, that's, that's, that's basically the conclusion of the report. But behind this report, there are some variables that I would like to stress. It's not hard to grasp. The first one is population. We are increasingly having much more people in the world. Some experts say that we will have around 9 billion people in the same 20 years that I was mentioning. And on the, other, on the same side, we have that human ecological footprint, that what we are demanding from the planet. And it's basically has, it has been aligned with the population, and it started to increase around 2000 and something, the early 2000, because India and China and some other like countries are going west on their lifestyle. So what we're basically seeing is some, some it's a depletion, a depletion of the human, of the, the planet resources by humans. And on the other side of this equation, we have supply, we have demand, and we have supply. And we have longer past the, 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 the moments where Demand and supply met each other. It was around 1988, the report says. So we have long past that moment of equilibrium on that equation. And why am I talking to you about this? Uh, not to scare you a bit, probably, but I'm talking to you because behind these two variables, human population, lifestyle behavior, lack of resources, there is a problem behind those two, which is waste. We are creating increasingly amounts of waste. And we are only recycling a fraction of it. We know, and this is pretty much the best case in the world, we recycle a third of what we should. And we are experimenting a lot of space to put all the garbage that we produce. And this is Europe, once again. So waste is a problem, obviously. But it's also an opportunity. To end waste is an opportunity. And I believe the opportunity behind this thing is to provide people with the tools and motivation to make them want their waste. Because if you want, if you like your waste, you will not throw it away. And that will hopefully solve or help to solve the equation. So that's why myself and my company at UN, we are doing, we are creating tools and we're creating tools that motivate people to start saving waste, to start keeping their waste for themselves. Mm -hmm. It's kind of strange thing, I know. This is the first question I was like, it, 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 it wasn't on the toilet. <laughs> um, but, uh, and how to motivate people? And the second question was, how can I motivate people? There are several ways of how to motivate people, as we all know. We can threaten people with fines. If you don't recycle, I will charge you $100. And yeah, San Francisco does that. Um, we have also the possibility of uh, scare people with the things of doom. If you don't recycle, we will all going to die. That's what I did, basically, on the first beginning. Um, we can ask people to act based on their conscience, do some awareness campaigns, try them to bad people or 
at least try to convince them to act correctly. Or, and now I believe this is the best approach because the others are, as we know, that they are not entirely effective. If you can't beat them, reward them. So play the game on the side and reward people by giving them the technology to transform their ways into things they value, into new things they want and need. But the tools are for the people, okay? So people need. And that's how our government do it. So that's what we are, we are, are doing. We are making people love their ways. Because if you love something, what do you do? You cherish it. You keep it for yourself. You try to, to do some of those things with the things and the people you love. Um, but, and that's basically the, the idea behind this, is to make people desire their ways. And that's why we are creating this stuff that we call home recycling solutions, because we, we're starting at home. There are a lot of places where you can do your own, have your own ways, of course, companies in the streets, but we're starting at home with this home recycling solution. Because basically what we're doing is, in, this, in, the, in, in our reality today, you have a planet, you go to the planet to get your resources, to make the goods you buy, and then you take the goods home, which you consume, and basically you will eventually produce waste. The packaging, the waste is the first thing that you produce. The, the packaging is the first waste that you produce. But then you eventually throw more waste into the garbage, and then you forget it. You forget the same. You throw the garbage away, and someone will come and collect it and throw it into a dump, or uh, in the best case, it will be recycled. But this equation, this side of the equation, is costly. It costs a lot of money to do this, and we don't have money, by the way. Um, it contaminates. Recycling also contaminates, and dumping stuff into the, the land surely contaminates. And there are no land available. It's becoming scarcer and scarcer to have places to put our garbage. You pay, we will be out of land to put the garbage in 10 years. It's UK. It's a land, I know. It's a, a, an island, I know. That's it. There you go. Um, so the idea is to act where the decision of wasting takes place. And that is at home. That's where we decide, each one of us, to create waste. And that's where we're going to be act, uh, 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 acting. We have own recycling solutions that will basically provide new goods. So we're basically creating the new out of the old, or making people, or providing people the tools to create the new out of the old. And by doing this, we'll be eliminating all that part of the equation, and we will be releasing pressure on natural resources, because we will not need to go so many times to our planet to get the resources we need to, keep, to produce the products we want to consume. So by doing this, what are we doing? We are basically changing the place of recycling, and who is doing it? I usually say that we're starting to change the paradigm of recycling. We're basically changing the value. Who is keeping the value of recycling? And we are basically um, also changing the place where it happens, and all the structure that is behind it, and the responsibility. We are all responsible for cleaning our own mess, but we're not doing it. We're paying up to our taxes for someone to do it, and they are basically not doing that well. So the first one is like a solution, so you can get a, a figure that it's, this is not only out of theory. We'll have the waste of these vegetable cooking oil. And this waste, as some might know, is a column with three layers. It's a dead end at home, almost like in solutions again. It's a dead end. The easiest way, let's be honest, we we oil is to throw it, to pour it down the drain. The best case, you would put it in a bottle and throw it down the, with the, with the rest of the garbage. But the common way is to put it, pour it down the drain. And that has an impact. One liter of oil contaminates a lot of liters of water. It's up to one million, some say it's less, some say it's something like that, whatever. It's a lot of liters of water. And if, if, it's, if it doesn't go to contaminate the water, it's, uh, it's, um, it's demanding a lot of resources to clean that water that it doesn't go to contaminate. So it's a, an economical problem as well, the impact. And there are a lot of liters of oil out there to be recycled. There are 40 million tons of liters of oil produced every year worldwide. 
if this equation should, should be in place, it's the total, this waste would contaminate eight times the total water in all the rivers in the world. So, for the year. Okay, so, and it's happening, basically. So, a home recycling solution to make people of their years greasy, smelly vegetable oil is to transform it into candles. What other thing more lovely and more adorable than a, 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 a decorative candle with different colors, different aromas, different shapes? And I have here one, of course, which is the result of the candle maker. And this was made with my father's restaurant oil, actually, because I have a Spanish stove and I only have all of my restaurants. And she so uses it and reuses it and reuses it. Um, and how does this work, basically? Well, I'm, I've got a video to show you. É muito simples. As candles that save water são feitas numa máquina que nós chamamos de candle maker, que é uma máquina em tudo idêntica a uma cafeteira doméstica. É nesta máquina que se vai dar a transformação. Para esta transformação acontecer, precisamos de umas pastilhas. As candle pods. Estas pastilhas, com uma fórmula química desenvolvida e patenteada pela UNE, são completamente seguras. Não representam qualquer risco para a saúde ou para o ambiente. Mas vamos então ver como é que se faz uma vela. O que temos aqui é o um protótipo do processo que se passa dentro da máquina, não é a máquina em si. E para isso precisamos do quê? Precisamos de óleo usado. Vamos usar um bocadinho do óleo do jantar de ontem. Na máquina depois há um, um depósito onde se pode armazenar o óleo o tempo que se quiser, antes de fazer a vela. E depois o que é que precisamos? Precisamos da pastilha, do candle pod. E vamos escolher uma. Pode ser uma branca. As candles that save water têm sempre 80% de óleo usado e um tamanho mínimo de 125 ml, apesar da máquina estar preparada para fazer velas maiores, o que é ótimo porque se usa mais óleo usado. Ao utilizar óleo vegetal usado, as nossas velas são praticamente neutras na emissão de carbono, ao contrário de uma vela normal que usa parafina. Voltemos à nossa vela. Está feita! Na Candle Maker são precisos apenas 4 minutos para fazer uma vela. Chegou a altura de despejar a nossa vela no copo. Este copo já está preparado com um pavio e a Candle Maker terá um dispositivo para colocar os pavios de forma muito simples e intuitiva, para que o resultado seja sempre fantástico. E agora é só deixar repousar uns minutos e temos a nossa Candle that says water. Em resumo, com uma Candle Maker, um Candle Pod e óleos usados, salvamos a água, poupamos os recursos e desfrutamos da experiência. Excelente. Hopefully before the, the Christmas we will be selling the candle maker and the candle pots internationally in Europe. So back to our why the benefits of this and why does this make sense? And this is a stepping stone solution. We have other things in our mind to, to develop, but this is just to show you how this solution can be makes sense, completely makes sense. It reduces waste, as I said, by changing waste into value and releasing the pressure on natural resources. It reduces the environmental impact. It doesn't all it, it doesn't only prevent it preventing water contamination, but it's also reducing CO2 emissions. Because not only you you save everything that is on the logistics side of buying a candle and making a candle, but also these candles are one hundred percent vegetable, which means that they are carbon neutral. And there are a lot of millions of candles being burned every day worldwide. So it's producing a lot of made out of paraffin and producing a lot of CO2. It reduces energetic and economical costs. Roughly 500 billion euros are spent every day in Europe to clean water. Water from urban, urban uh, sewages, contaminated with wasted used oil. So it's a lot of money that we can start saving, of course. This, this is a, uh, a journey. And last but surely not least, literally, because this is really important, it promotes a change of behavior. 
Because why? Because it's who is believing promotes goodwill for his disciples. All of us have that question of, I am being asked to separate garbage. But when I throw the garbage away, the guys in the truck come, they collect everything, and they put in the same container. So what the hell am I being asked to separate the garbage? Even if they don't separate it at the end, that's stupid, at least. So the thing here is, and that doesn't create goodwill, that creates bad will. So the thing here is a do-it-yourself solution with no doubts on what happens to that used vegetable oil. And actually, it gives you the benefit of recycling and of keeping that used vegetable oil to yourself. So it changed the behavior. So this not test, but seed home recycling solution because it's not only technological, it's not only entertaining. And it's not only designed with a new signature in here, it's also environmental. So this home, this key home recycling solution will change the paradigm of recycling. Thank you. Of course, of course. Well, uh, the solution, I'm not going to tell you the price. <laughs> You'll have to wait a couple of months. But I must tell you that the try, that what we're creating is something aspirational. Well, what, what does this mean? Is that it means that we're creating something key. It has to be beautiful. It has to be entertaining. And it has to look great. We're, we're working with Portuguese and Scandinavian designs to make this piece of equipment and technology and solution look really great. So, and there's a lot of research behind it. So, we're not going to sell this for free. Because if I would do that, and Poon is a new brand, no one would buy it. I'm not going to buy it. A thing that these forms use oil into candles that burn for $15. I wouldn't do that for 50 euros. So, basically, it will not be that expensive. It will be around 200 and 300 euros, but it will not be for free. And that makes sense from the beginning of that thing. The consumer also. How are they not the ones that are the same as well? 100% vegetable, it's a combination of things that we have developed, of course. And they don't, and why the Nespresso, which I love actually, is I usually say this is the Nespresso of candle making. Why are recycling? It depends on the, on the, on the, on the constant time. Uh, but, um, but basically, the Nespresso leaves waste, the capsule. And that, that's a huge problem for them, actually. This, this is no waste because it totally disappears with the candle. And it's 100% vegetable. So it's, there's no problem on it. You can throw the candle away actually before after you do that. To the lands and it's no problem. It will it will feed the plants. Okay, last question. Uh, question. So do you believe that the Portuguese will accept these or are you rather or believe in the European or the Americans or the Japanese or the Chinese? Yeah, sure. I, I, I was glad to hear this morning from uh, my colleagues telling that we should look into the world, to the world, and we start looking. We need to create things here, but we should think of telling them and of addressing the world. And that's basically what we're doing. We're not looking into the Portuguese market, I'm sorry. We're looking into the European market. We will start selling here in Portugal because we're Portuguese, of course. But we also we start selling in Denmark, Sweden, and in France, and Germany, and in Poland, for example, in Holland. So which is a great, great country for this market, for this product. Uh, so we will be selling in Europe, not only in Portugal. So moment zero. Good luck. Thank you. Very much. Thank you.